This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, top of the day to all of you publishing, authoring, writing, and today we're going to do a tap dance in, around, through, over, under videos. How to create them, how to market them, what kind of accessories you need, how to do them without feeling you have to be a master editor, and we're going to be talking about building your tribe. And for those of you who don't know what a tribe is, with us is an expert in tribe building as well as video making and how to market them and use them to expand your influence, your empire, and your tribe. With me is Gina Carr. She's the CEO and co-founder of Video Rock Stars, and that's with a Z, the online community for business experts who want to master and monetize their video marketing and virtual presentations. Jean has been named as a top marketing thought leader over 50 by Brand Quarterly and as a who's who among women in e-commerce by We Magazine. A classic serial entrepreneur, she's got both an MBA from Harvard Business School as well as an industrial engineering degree from Georgia Tech. That's a wowza, everyone. She's created and hosted several web-based TV shows, including TEDx, Dupree Park TV, and eSpeakers TV. She's passionate and an advocate for animals and plant-based business. And before we leave today, she has got to tell us about her chocolate avocado pudding. Gina, welcome to Author You, your guide to book publishing. Well, thank you so much, Judith. Happy to be here. Delighted to connect with you again. Okay, you know what? I got to know about the avocado pudding. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I just made a new batch this past week. I had some avocados that were getting a little too ripe, and uh-huh. it's so simple. You just put avocados in, uh, some chocolate powder, cocoa powder, uh, a little bit of agave uh, for sweetening. Let's see what else is in there. Hmm. Not, not much else, really. It's, it's really just so simple. Updates. Oh, yeah, so like for every avocado, you would put a date, a big medjool date, and um, and with that, it's it's delicious, it's simple, it's it's pretty healthy. You wouldn't want to eat a whole bunch of them because the dates and the agave ha- and the avocados have a little bit of calories, but you know, basically whole food, plant based. I love it. Oh, sounds fun. All right, moving on. Let's get some other goody things to eat and noodle on. So you you talk about you know we we've heard this actually for a long long time um, why we need video. So let's just start there. Why should every author, which is certainly our primary audience, why should every author have a video or two or maybe a dozen? Well, it's just a, a way to amplify what you would do in person. And the fact that you can do it with tools that are essentially free to you to reach most every person on the planet, or, or you know, pre- except for maybe North Korea, Iran, and uh, a couple of other places, but you can reach so much of the planet. And just as if people were to meet you in person at a party or an event, they would be probably more inclined to buy books from you, that's the same thing when they get to know you through video. Just think about it. There are probably people whose videos you've watched for years, and you don't, you may not have met that person in person, but you feel like you really know them. And so it's not, and it goes beyond no. It's the know, like, and trust factor that we want to build with people that that are going to be customers of ours, that are going to be clients of ours. And, and it really does go beyond just the money issue as well. Because so many people can watch these videos, 
for free. You can produce them for free. You're able to have a much bigger impact in the world. And, Judith, I know uh, mm-hmm. I don't know all of your authors, but I know uh, a, a little bit about a lot of them, and that is that they have a message to get out. And if you have a message to get out today, yes, a book is a fantastic vehicle, a long-lasting, long-tailed vehicle. And when you supplement that with video, you're just going to have a much more tremendous impact that people are going to want to dig into what you're doing, want to know more about your thoughts, want to get more of you through your books. So that is why video is so important today for authors. And and that's not going to change at all. You know, it, uh, Gina, I have to tell you, I was talking to one of my authors who was working on her third book, which is Bravo, but she's not supporting her first two. They're wonderful children's books, wonderful, wonderful children's books that have taken a twist. She writes like a Dr. Zeus kind of thing, and it takes a wonderful twist into Jonah and the Whale and Noah's Ark and those kind of things. And right now, in this period of COVA, I said, why aren't you re- reaching out to every Bible school you can find online? Why aren't you reaching out to anything with the word Christian in it and offer? And even, you know, this is Old Testament, so we're dealing with, you know, and anything would go. And I just said, why aren't you offering to do an online read? Why aren't you creating these little videos, just like you're saying, and getting out? And it goes back to the old classic. I think this is where people get stopped is they think, oh, my God, I have to. This is marketing. Oh, my God, I don't want to market. I just want to write. Haven't you heard that before? I, I, <laughs> leave me alone. I want to write. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yes, I hear that. I hear that so much. And the thing is that, gosh, you put all this effort into writing, folks. But if you're not getting the word out about it, what good is that? You've written for a reason, and it's maybe it's just for you. Maybe it is just for you, but I doubt it. You've probably put a moderate amount of effort into getting it out into the world, and so put a little bit more effort out into the into getting it out into the world. And you know, I think one of the things that trips people up, Judith, on video is that people think it has to be professionally done and edited. They have to go to a studio, and that's just not true anymore. In fact, the more natural the videos are where they show uh, an author in their own home or in a place that they love, and even just a vi- uh, when someone holds up their phone and does a real authentic recording about why they love writing children's books or why they included, let's say in this example, why they included Jonah and the Whale in this particular story and behind the scenes, what, what prompted that? they will have so much more connection with their audiences. And they can do these Facebook Facebook Live is a really easy way to learn how to do video. I I know some people say, well, going live the first time, that's kind of counter. I'd rather record and then publish it. For me, I found that going the recording and publishing and editing route just took a lot of time and effort, and they were never good enough. (laughs) I was... I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I don't, I'm not proud of that, but, but I, I wanted them to be so perfect that I would never publish them, literally. And so what I learned to do was to just take my phone or turn on my Zoom, turn on my camera, uh, on my phone, on my computer and go live into Facebook. It just felt more natural. Like I'm having a conversation with someone and I wasn't as harsh and critical on myself. And furthermore, once it's out into the world, it's out into the world. Uh, you, you, you can turn it off, you can delete it and take it back, but as long as you don't say anything too egregious, people expect you to be natural, and the more natural and authentic you are, the more of a bond you're going to build with people. So do you think that's something that holds, holds some of your authors up, is that, yeah. uh, the, that thought that they need all this fancy equipment or they need, they need um, editing and that sort of thing? Oh, oh, Gina, I think that, uh, number one, I think they all feel they have to have a professional editor in, and it's nonsense. It's nonsense. You are so, so right on target when you say it's the naturalness that's going to be the connector. It's not being stoic and staid and 
perfectly coughed and, uh, and all that stuff. Just uh, well, let's just go back to Nike. Just do it, people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. it, it's just getting out and do it. You know what? I finally got the goose to put videos on my website and I'm in, you know, I'm in the process. This summer is the website makeover and it'll include new videos and I did it and I always tell people it was a bad hair day but boy the voice was good I was <laughs> on target <laughs> I was on target and I went through every key page you know every tab on my website and I made a video for that page and and just this is what you're going to find within this is this is what you'll do uh, that kind of thing and very smart um, I, I've had people come back and said, you know, I have listened to your opening homepage video 13 times. I had someone say to me the other day, and I said, was I not clear? Did I, you know, what's happened? She says, no, I just loved it. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and that's what you want. Just so, it, you know, it was, it was just, I was inspired. I was, you know, I had, the, and that's when I had the separate camera and the different lights. Boy, you just don't have to do all that today. Just exactly what you said. Turn on your your smartphone. It's got a video. Yeah. And, yes, and exactly. Just, and go ahead. Go. Just go. 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 <laughs> yes. I mean, imagine the power of this author finding groups, as you said, find places that have Christian in the name. So, so you could go to Facebook, for example, and you yeah. can just do in the Facebook search bar, Christian kids. Christian, uh, homeschool kids, children. even. Our children. Uh, uh, children. Yeah. All children would love this, I'm sure. And, and Facebook organizes it by groups. You look at the group, you contact the admin, and you say, hey, could I do a little reading? Could we have story time with Jane, whoever the author is? Uh, I have this thing that I do, story time with Jane. I, I read a few pages from my book, and the children really love it. And I, I'd love to do this for your community if you'd like. And they can right. see how and so many people are Gina, in the community. Hold, yeah, hold that. We're going to take a quick break. I was hoping I was waiting for you to take a breath. But anyway, so take a quick break. We'll come back because I want to finish on the steps to do this. It's important. We'll be right back. Okay. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Is there a book in you or another? Author You shows you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being hoodwinked. If you already have a book out, you will find a supportive and brainstorming community that is connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual Author U extravaganza. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publishing. Author U is the premier authoring resource in the country, creating community, education, guidance, vision, and success for the serious author. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author U is for you. Timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted on its social media platforms, and it is free. Discover Author U, where authors go to become seriously successful. Join Author You today at AuthorU.org. Are you confused about publishing options? Do you know which printing option is best for your book? Does your stomach flip when you think about selling books? Or do you feel overwhelmed with what to do about book marketing and publicity? Get the answers and much more. Get them and from someone who knows publishing inside and out from both the traditional and independent sides how to make a successful book. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so. Or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand and platform, and is a success. 
a bestseller. It is your choice. You choose. If you want author and publishing success, you want Judith Bryles as your book coach. Sign up for her weekly blogs and easing at thebookshepherd.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. With me is the fabulous Gina Carr. She is not only a smarty um, in both engineering, oh my God, but business. And she has developed a variety of different programs, which we're not talking about in depth today, but she is just really spot on about video creation and why you need to do it. Just turn on your phone and please people do it. And and secondly, on tribe building, oh, which we're going to kiss on during our hour with you today. So we were talking when we took the break because I was sharing a story about I was frustrated with one of the authors I was working on because she just wants to write. I so get that. I do so get that. But Writing is only 10% of your author's success. 90% is marketing. So what Gina's talking about is really an easy-peasy, no-brainer way to start building your influence that you can reach globally, um, almost all countries, you know, and that's you're going to be playing mostly in North America, which is your really spot on. And that you can start bringing people to wherever you land your books or whatever products you have for sale. Is that Did I sum that up, Gina? You sure did. All right. So we were talking about a book that had a Christian theme. They're very fun. They're beautiful, 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 bright, wonderful colors and illustrations um, of these books. And yet nothing's being real done. And I had suggested, you know, well, I would just... Google search, you know, Christian this and that and and pull it in and that. And Gina was starting to talk about, okay, so here's what you do. So I want you to go back to that. Here's what you do on Facebook or Google. And if you'll start on that search part, Gina, they'll all hear it because we got cut off before we went to our break. Okay, great. Yes, well, I would go to Facebook. Now, Google is a powerful search engine, but Facebook is... I want you to think about Facebook as Facebook groups in particular as virtual clubhouses that are filled with people that are perfect for you, whatever your niche audience is. In this case, let's say it's Christian parents of young children in particular. And by going to the Facebook search bar and putting in Christian parents, Christian parents of young children, you can find very specific groups virtual clubhouses, if you will, that are dedicated to that, and that's all they talk about. So I, if I were the owner of one of those groups and someone like your author contacted me and said, hey, I do a story time for where I read a little bit of my book and I talk about the background of the characters and a little bit of backstory about how this book came across. It's been very popular in person in events, and I, I'm doing it now online through video, and it's it's." People are really loving it. So could I come into your group and do this? And the way Facebook functionality works is you can do these focused videos, Facebook Lives, right into the group. And because of the functionality of Facebook, it notifies a lot of people in the group. So if you get into a very active group, even of just a few hundred people, and some of these I'm seeing right now with a quick search are multiple thousands of people, you can really create a lot of new fans, and ideally, you've already set up your own Facebook group where you're inviting them to come join you in your Facebook group, if that's okay with the ad, the owner of the book of the group that you're that you're uh, targeting right then. Mm-hmm. I love that, and and so we're talking about being super casual, you know, 
you put some lipstick on ladies if that's what you normally wear. But, for, you know, you don't have to get fancy dancy. Um, and one of the things that I love because I did so much media over the years, you just basically have to dress from the waist up. Always cool. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> you will. Let's just be real here. So you just don't have to. But, you know, you have your colors do that. You have your books. Have um, What I will tell all of you, and Gina, I don't know if you're going to kiss on that. Please. Make it so to flip flip your your uh, camera so you can see what's in the back of you, because I've seen people have unmade beds behind them. That is a no no. Come on, let's make it look like it is. It certainly can be your home. Um, I kind of love Gina what I see and on the TV now because I'll go. You know, I see people's kitchens and I'm going, oh man, he's got all these fresh tomatoes today. Mm, look at look at the pineapples on that counter. Or I actually figured out someone dishes one time that they were showing in their in their <laughs> kitchen. Or or I find myself trying to read the spine on their books. I love seeing the homes and where people live because it reveals part of their personality and it goes back to what you said. During our first segment, it's a connector. You know, if 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 you read like I read, we must be connected. Gee, if you like to have dishes like I do, because I have a dish, I'm a dish fanatic. So, um, and I collect, I have more sets of dishes. It's embarrassing. Anyway, so that um, you know, those are connectors there that you get with people. But if it's if it looks really gross behind you. That is not what you want to show. So you either get a dummy screen or you do one of the, the variable of the virtual green screen or do something to do the block. But I actually like to just see the natural side. So that's me. I don't know how you feel. You're the video expert. Okay. Well, I totally agree with you. And, yes, this totally allows people to to connect with you, to get to know, like, and trust you. And, you know, our human brains are, are wired. When we meet someone or when we see someone on video, we're constantly saying, do I like this person or not? You know, just subconsciously even. You, you may not be aware of it. Uh, what do I have in common with this person? And so your brain is scanning for the dishes, and mine would be scanning similarly for, the, for the, what's on the counter. And, you know, the fruits and vegetables would just perk me right up because I'm – plant-based and I love it and so that's that's part of what we're doing and we're saying oh granite countertops that's kind of nice too right yeah exactly. <laughs> what, what, whatever it is that's going on <laughs> with the kitchen so so to your point they don't have to have a fa fancy equipment they don't need to spend a bunch of money and go into a studio just find an uncluttered area that can be your backdrop. People like to know where you live. I actually have a tapestry, uh, a very inexpensive tapestry, $40 or so from Amazon, that's right behind me because I do have a bookcase right behind me. And my bookcase is so close that people would be reading the spines, and there's a lot of books. And so I don't want that. But if my bookcase were a little further back, more like 10, 15 feet, I probably would leave the bookcase um, showing. But I have a tapestry, and I just clip it up to the bookcase. It's very simple, very easy, and that's a nice, clean way to have a background mm. that reveals a little bit about you. Mine is actually an Art Deco gl um, painted gl world map, and so it reminds me of all the wonderful people I've met around the world and the places that I've gone, and makes me happy, and it looks good with my colors, and I like it. So this one works for me. It's personal, but a lot of people are adopting it and using it, and that's good too. But you can find, if you just do a tapestry search, you can find something like that. I'm not real big on the virtual backgrounds. In general, they don't look good on most people. Most people, they look really weird and freakish. You can't see their arms when they move. Their hair looks goofy. And so in Video Rockstar is the program that I have where we work with people to help them increase their confidence on video and, and develop better video skills. We don't use video. We don't use green screen a lot. Well, and here's the other thing. If you're using it on your computer, if people just move their head like a quarter of an inch, all of a sudden you get a, a white halo around it. I mean, it's, it's not the best. It's not the most perfect. So I'm with you. I'd rather, I, I do have a neat screen, but I don't use it that often because I know they're all fake. I'm more into, tell me more about you. 
So I'm going to go. I love the tapestry, the tapestry idea um, and all that and finding something. And also, if you find something you love, guess what? You're going to come across everyone better because you know you're in an environment that you're comfortable in. And just saying, I want you to think about that. So, all right. Yeah. So let's, yeah, yeah. Could, could, could I share a couple of tips to help people also look more confident? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so, so folks, you want to get light on the front of your face. I see people often having bright lights to their side or behind them. They have uh, a window that's open. They have a door that the light's coming through. And you want to close the light, turn off the light, and conceal it as much as possible that is behind you. And you want to get light on the front of your face. This can be natural lighting, which is often excellent, or artificial lighting. And there again, you don't have to get fancy equipment. You just can get artificial lights from your own home. Just balance them out. Get one on each side of you, and that will be better than projecting in the dark. And then you want to get your camera stabilized. No more of this bouncing in your lap or people seeing the the no shot. You want to get your camera stabilized in front of you and at, at or about eye level. And you can use books to, if you're using your computer camera, you can use books to, or boxes to make your computer higher. So you don't want that looking down and you don't want to, so I have a lot of tips like that that we could go through more if you want, but, but that's one of the mm-hmm. biggest ones that I see is people need to stabilize their camera, get it at or eye level, and get the light in front of their faces. Those are great tips, and um, I, I, I just can't echo them enough that people, I see more people, I see more tops of the heads, and I don't understand it. I mean, it's just like, so you really have to look at that keyboard. Um, but so look at the, you've got, if you're using a laptop to, to do it and talk into your video live, there is a camera and it's usually in the middle of the frame on your screen. Look at it, people, or on your phone, just look straight at it. And, um, I level Gina is so absolutely right on about that. You will have better interaction and your viewers will think you're talking to them instead of scripting or something else. Gina, I would love to have you come when we come back. We've got about 30 seconds before our next break. I would love to have you come back and talk about do you script or not script? And how can, I know that there's scrolling uh, capabilities, but maybe some techniques that you found. You've been out on the road for a gazillion years as a speaker. I know you don't memorize everything, but you do have key points you always go over. So what are some of the triggers that you use as a professional to make sure that you can still keep your eyeball connection um, with your with your audience. We'll be right back. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Discover the power of you and your book at the Judith Bryles Unplugged events. Each summer, Judith Bryles Book Marketing Unplugged unfolds over three intensive days working with just Judith. You get publishing strategies, author and book platforms, book marketing panache and pizzazz, and authoring tools to take you and your book to rock star success. In the fall and winter, Judith Bryles Speaking Unplugged includes Judith as your coach and mentor during two powerful days. You will learn how to structure a speech, how to create openings and closings, how to find gigs that pay you and sell your books, and you will get one-on-one coaching. Go to thebookshepherd.com and click on the Events tab to learn how to participate at the next Unplugged Workshop event. Congratulations on getting your book published. The effort you put into your work is truly commendable. But what's next? What will happen to all the knowledge you have worked so hard to acquire to produce your book? 
Here at Toginet Radio, we can provide you a platform to keep your knowledge working for you through the power of podcast. The subjects our podcasts cover are as varied as the grains of sand on a beach. From life coaching to military resources to business success, even to the paranormal. We have a place for everyone. To get started on your next step, call Scott at 903-787-5880 or email him at scott at toginetradio.com. That's S-C-O-T-T at T-O-G-I-N-E-T-R-A-D-I-O dot com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, with me is Gina Carr. We're talking about how to be a rock star. Um, with your videos that are easy peasy, that basically have zero cost behind them, assuming you've got a camera somewhere you can use to connect with the internet. I'm just going to just say that so you can do a Facebook Live um, with that. But we're, really, she was getting into awesome tips um, for the best lighting, and I wanted her to give a few more of those before we jump to our next topic. Because, Gina, I want you to get into marketing using the video. I think that's really important. Okay. Well, to to one of the points that you were making as we were leaving the last break is the eyeball connection. So in addition to getting your camera stable and at or above eye level, to your point, look in the camera. What happens so many times, especially on the meetings where other people are present in a Zoom or Microsoft Teams or whatever it might be, People are looking at the audience or the person they're interviewing to get feedback, and as they would naturally do if you were in person. But you've got to make a conscious effort to train your eyes to look at the camera because going back to my initial comment, you want to get people to cross that know, like, and trust bridge so they trust you. If you aren't, think about in person, if someone's constantly looking down at their feet or looking off to the side, that is, does not in, it, it does not create trust. And so you want to look at the eyes, and that means look at the camera. Even if it feels weird and you don't want to do it, the more you practice it, the more you work at it, the more you can do that. So mm-hmm. that's, that's what I recommend there. And, and for me, I have my camera up on a tripod. I have a separate detached camera. It's a Logitech C920 up on a detached selfie stick that sits in front of my monitor so I can sort of see the faces behind pretty easily as I look through the camera. And I know I'm throwing out a lot of different resources here. I, later on, whenever you're ready, I do have a resources page that people could look at to see lighting and camera and microphones that I recommend. Oh, well, you know, why don't we just give it to them right now? So we're, we're okay. going to go to her website. All right, so Gina, do that. Okay, so that's ginacar.com slash resources. You'll see a resources button, and most of these go to Amazon, and many of them are affiliate links, but they have the different tools that I recommend. And, and we, I mentioned microphones. That's another important tip. Actually, audio is the most important part of video, which people might not think that's the case, but people will listen to a video even if they can't, if, even if the video is bad. So let's say you forgot to put that light on your face. As long as the audio is good, then that then people will will listen and consume your your content. So you want to be real careful about that. And people often think, well, I'm using my phone or I'm using my computer, and it's got a microphone, and it sounds just fine to me. Well, let me just tell you that there's a big difference in in the way that you'll come across if you are using an external microphone versus the one especially that's in your computer. And it creates that warmth. Again, similar to being in someone's with someone in person. And it just comes across in a much more authentic manner, a relatable manner, without that hollowness and echoiness that you often get when you're streaming through your computer or through your phone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
So, and, and one of the things, well, so Gina Carr, that's G I N A C A R R, a double R dot com forward slash resources. So there is a lot of fabulous tips. I mean, I've actually explored it myself. There is a lot of fabulous tips. One of the things she talked about lighting, because I, I love my little ring light. Um, that I use, which is, of course, Amazon too. You just you can just go to a selfie ring light. It's got a tripod. You can go tall, short, um, and the color you would use because you have like three options for colors. You want to go to the peachy, pinky color. It's better on your face, especially for us ladies. Um, but Gina likes the cowboy uh, lighting. So Gina, explain cowboy. Yeah, they're also called soft box light. So if you think about going into a traditional photography studio, these are those big box lights with the uh, white screens and they they have lighting behind them, but because of the white screen it diffuses it. And so this makes a really nice look for your videos. And this is what this is what a lot of a lot of folks use that I know. Right. And so Amazon again under 70 bucks for the whole set. Um, and yeah. doing that. Yeah, you know, so. this is something I put off for years, and it really delayed me in creating videos because I never was comfortable with the lighting. And I don't know. I just thought, well, I don't have room for them. They're too expensive. And then finally I just said, I'm going to do it. And after I got that, that helped me be much more comfortable creating videos because I know I looked a lot better. So, you know, I'm just actually looking at it on Amazon as we talk, and it's a double set. So, Gina, do you use just one light box, or do you use two? I use two, and I, and I think it's real important to use two because if you put one in front of you, inevitably you're going to have a little bit of shadow on one side of your face or the other to turn your head at the least. So I use two, and they are on either side of my camera. They are actually up a good bit higher. I, I even have mine pointing towards the ceiling a bit because I found that pointing down towards my face was a little too harsh. So you just have to learn to work with it and work with your own lighting and your own situation. But but there are lighting solutions for everyone, for every every situation. Mm -hmm. So your portable, everyone, could be like the ring one I'm talking about. Like when, where I'm up, um, a lot of you know that I've been kind of um, handicapped this summer. I crushed my ankle, had massive surgery. So I literally cannot put my foot down for three months. So I live on a scooter. Now, I actually, here's a video. I took a picture of my foot. I had people come back and said, so what kind of sock do you have on? I, <laughs> it was a hoot. Well, it's a bomba sock um, on there. But it was just, that's it's just the natural stuff. So I have the ring up because I can't, I can't go downstairs, obviously, into my offices. So I have that up. But as we were talking, I just ordered the softbox cowboy set. So there you go. Well, well, very good. That's terrific. And I do have ring lights also. I have the small ring lights that I use for on the road. They work really great. Mm -hmm. So that's what you, you know, what can you travel with? What can you can't, you know, what can't you? Um, and that that's, it's going to make your life easier, everyone. And isn't that what you all want? All right, marketing. Let's kiss on marketing a little bit. So we've got these, we've got, we've done Facebook Lives, or we've done a variety of things. We've created our own videos. How do we market with these? Well, one of the best ways to market is just to start doing videos on your own Facebook personal profile. And let's say that, that you like LinkedIn. Some of your, some of your audience is saying, Gina, enough about Facebook. I like LinkedIn or I like Instagram. Okay. I think it's really good just to go live on Facebook, get your video out there into the world, then you download it. You can upload it to LinkedIn. You can upload it to YouTube. You can upload snippets of it to Instagram. So that's what I would recommend. And for a lot of your authors, going to these Facebook groups and asking to do a, a story time or to do a webinar or just a Facebook Live instead of, instead of calling it a webinar, you might call it a live webinar or a Facebook Live to talk about some of the concepts. A lot of Facebook group owners will do this. And if you have your own, even better, just do your own events. I love challenges. Speaking of marketing, um, what I'm really seeing work well for authors and speakers out there is to do challenges 
And these can be three to 10 days. I just did a 30 videos in 30 days, make a big impact challenge. And believe me, that was kind of wearing on everyone. But it was a great way for rebranding for a lot of people who really needed to get their message out in a big way and create some buzz. Uh, so so when you're when you've got your launch going, that's actually not a bad idea to do a thirty video mm-hmm. in thirty days uh, where you're out there talking about a different aspect of your book every single day and maybe you're inviting different people from different places. But you create a free Facebook group and you invite people to join your challenge and in this challenge you're going to cover different things. So so Judith, are most of your authors nonfiction or fiction? They're mostly nonfiction, right? Oh, I would say it's probably sixty forty. With nonfiction, but it's amazing, you know, what goes on. And, you know, I'm one of these proponents, Gina, that even if you're writing nonfiction, you better be using storytelling in it if you want to. Connect. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That's so important. So imagine that you you were using story. So so you invite people to come to this challenge. Let's just say it's a five-day challenge, and you teach different concepts from your fiction or nonfiction book on each of those mm-hmm. days. And so you're getting your content out into the world in a bigger way. You're creating a strong relationship with folks. And I don't know about you, Judith, but, but my book that was published on Amazon, our, our book about influencer marketing and social social scoring, I didn't get a whole lot of money from Amazon on that on that book, but what I have gotten money on are online courses that were related to those concepts. And now I have a membership program, my Video Rockstars, which is essentially influencer marketing, but with a video twist. And so, so I like to see people do these challenges. And from the challenges, certainly you're going to sell a lot more books, uh, and also lead people into an online course or a membership program where people continue to work on those skills and implement that knowledge and just take the concepts that you're teaching that you were compelled enough to write the book about, take that into the online world. You deliver this with the online-based video for your course or your membership program, and it just it, you're creating a movement. You're, cr- you're creating much more impact in the world than just your standalone book, but your book is the foundation for it. It's critically important. Oh, oh, no question, because that does it. It 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 it's the um, the base for your expertise of why you're doing it. And so, when you do a challenge, quick question, um, before we go to our final break, but quick question: When you do a challenge, are you? Is it more of a delivering information? Are you going through? You know, I mean, I've got several books. I could, boy, I could just unload this way. Um, or are you challenging them to do a task? That's my question. It's both. So what I do is, for example, in one that I did recently, I talked about a content formula for online videos, for short videos, three to five minute videos that are helping people get to know, like, and trust you more, getting your word out into, words out into the world more, or you ask frequently asked questions, or you read from a book, or you do different things. So this content formula has about five okay. pages. All right, don't go into them yet. We're going to take our final break, and then we'll get into them when we come right back. It's Author You, okay. your guide to book publishing. With me is Gina Carr. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing, and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and guide to collaborate with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You do not need more problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Riles will shepherd you through the maze and chaos. At times, she has had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher, by a publishing service provider, and sometimes even by the author. If you want author and book success, connect with her today at thebookshepherd.com.
Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right. Hours go fast. We have 12 minutes before we do a wrap-up. But Gina was just getting ready to start into five components, if I remember correctly, of, of creating this grouping that she's talking about in these challenges. Is that right, or did I get off that, track? That's exactly right. That's exactly okay. right. So, right. so this was in response to your question of uh, going back to the main way to market your books. I think market uh-huh. your books by creating an online course around your books or doing a challenge. So when you're doing your challenge, I, I teach and I give an, an exercise to go do before the next day's show, the next day's session. So in this case, I was teaching the content formula uh, for a little marketing video that I recommend people do. And so you open with a hook. So that is what's the question or what's a question or a problem or something that your audience that your customers are thinking about and it's on their mind. Then you tell a little story. Then you cover the teaching points, so maybe one to three teaching points. Then you issue a call to action. Call to action may be as simple as, why don't you like, comment, and share this video? Or it could be, why don't you come join me in my free Facebook group where we talk about these concepts more? Or it could be go to an opt-in or different things. And then you have a summary. So summary is phase five. If if you've gone more than, say, five to ten minutes in your video. But I encourage folks to do these and keep them short and simple. Facebook loves Facebook Live, so the more you do them on your personal profile, the more they're going to get shown to people and the more impact you're going to have. So if, you, uh, if you're doing Facebook, people, and, and I certainly I usually do for author publishing-related things, mar- book marketing, it's in the Book Shepherd group on that, publishing with Book Shepherd. Personal, I've kept more personal, but what she's saying is post it on your personal, then you can share it to a group if you have it or a business page. Would that be right, Gina? Yes, and I'm much more excited about what goes on in groups than business pages. I, I keep business pages because I need those for running ads, but business pages are really hard to get interaction and engagement. You can get interaction and engagement so much easier inside a Facebook group, and so that is the main Facebook marketing technique that I, that I teach. Mm-hmm. All right, so personal and then to a group if you have them, or in other groups that you're in, share it out. This is this is part of this is called marketing, people. This is how you do it. So that's what I'm all for. All right. So um, anything else you want? I love very simple steps that just I'll repeat it. You open with a hook. Could be a problem or a question to bring them in. Tell a, a, a story that involves it. And then you get into your teaching points, one to three. Uh, call to action. Do this. Go here. Blah, blah, blah. Kind of like the homework. And then a summing up. And ta-da, you're done. Lesson, yes, lesson and, 10 minutes. And, and, tying, and tying it back to the challenge. So I broke each of those down for the assignment for the, and for the teaching for that day, and I showed examples of good hooks, and I had them workshop good hooks, and then I challenged them to create a video within the next 24 hours demonstrating a good hook. And so they did each of these different components each day, and by the end of the week, they had much more powerful videos and a much more powerful framework that they had really dug into in order to create all their future videos. So that's mm-hmm. what people, that's what your authors can do as well. And, mm-hmm. and then I invited them to join me in a program for an online course. So how to create an online course, which is what a lot of my speaker and author clients need. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know I'm in the process of, do I have a book called How to Create a Million Dollar Speech, which is, I've done it. Um, and I, you know, it, it has got so many awesome twos. I actually have an in-person full two-day course. I, 
I teach on this. But of course, during COVID, um, we're all everything's gotten scrapped, and we have gone through and created a very extensive m modules. Da 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 da. The only thing we're going to have to add now is the video, and we are done. And voila, and really we'll start a big push out to everybody in the world we know that let's do a webinar to lead people to it. Or That's I like so what you exciting, said. Judith. Thank you. A live a live webinar. I like the live webinar. So, yeah, so I, a I live webinar typically doesn't have as many PowerPoint slides and things like that that you, people, people associate with webinars. So a lot of people think webinars are boring. So live webinar, you're mostly just talking. And again, this cuts down on the need for any special tech. You just talk into the camera as if you were talking to someone. And the more you do mm -hmm. it, the more you're going to get comfortable with it and the mm -hmm. more effective you're going to be. You know, I do live webinars. So I'll do it. My, I call it Ask Judith, actually, and I do those. That it's just really mainly on camera. If I had five slides, that would be a lot. But I open up the mic so people can talk to me from all over the world, and it is amazing what comes in. They love it. Br so brilliant, brilliant. Are you doing that through Facebook Live? No, I, do, I, I actually set it up as a regular full-blown webinar. We, we broadcast it. We put it out. We have social media to bring it in. I mean, I've had people from Africa call in on it. Uh, oh, very cool. Yeah, there's a great way to do it, and, and you're using video as the foundation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and with, with it, you can, and we record it. Um, and now you're able to, when you put on your camera, they will record you live on the camera now. So it's very cool. What can be, there's oh. so many things that you all can do. The bottom line is don't put your head in the sand like an ostrich with the technology. You don't need, now Gina's a smarty pants. She went to both Harvard and Georgia Tech. But um, you can do this too, even if you went to high school. Got it? even without high school. You can do it, people. Anybody. And, and no matter the age, Judith, I have people in my classes that are that are in their 80s, and they are taking these programs, and they're getting their words out. They're, they have so much wisdom to share and so much passion to share about life. And so it just it warms my heart so much. It does me too. I, I did a share with Gina. And then, Gina, I want you to talk about tribes really quick. I did a share with Gina about uh, my client, J.C. Childers. At 88, she just published her first book. Actually, it's on pre-buy on Amazon. It's called What Are You Doing the Rest of Your Life? And it, it is her, I mean, what a life, this 88-year-old gal. I wrote her a letter that very simple that she all she had to do is copy paste and send it to what I call the low hanging fruit. That's your friends and people who are in your contact base. She sent it out. We have already had two orders from Amazon for over fifty books each in a week. How cool is that? How that cool is, is so that? That is so powerful. So that is right, really tri powerful. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so tribes, real quick. Let's well, tribes, we kiss the best way I think you can organize your tribes these days is to put them into a Facebook group. And even if you met them on LinkedIn and they initially responded to something to you on LinkedIn, I encourage you to still set up a Facebook group and put them there because that's where the functionality is better. That's where people can post and interact and you have more control uh, and, and you can just get your people engaged more on a Facebook group. But it's important to have events. And so that's one of the reasons that the Facebook group is fantastic is you can have these regular live webinars, you can do your Facebook lives, you can constantly be asking them questions using the polling function in Facebook Live. Uh, in a tribe, you're going to want to establish different traditions, maybe some inside lingo, inside jokes, insider jokes that people who are in the tribe understand. And just fundamentally, the concept of a tribe is if you want to go fast, Go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And this is an old African proverb, and it speaks to the heart of if you really want to get your message out into the world, have a bigger impact, you're going to want to have a tribe of people that follow you. And online video is the best way to do that today. All right, so the proverb is if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go with others, something like that. Is that what I heard? If you want to go far. Go with others. You need other. Go Say together. it again. 
go, go see, together. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go, if you want to far. go far, go together. Go together. All right, I'm get it. So oh, I said go with others. See, I did hear it. I just heard it differently. There you go. All right. So tribe building. I, you know, I I love that you said that. Even if you are on LinkedIn, I actually love LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn has done a lot of morphing. But I had a very a wonderful uh, group. Uh, it's over seven. There's over almost eighteen thousand members in it. And then when LinkedIn did their morphing, they kind of threw all the groups to the side. And it's really hard. I mean, I, as the organizer, could send out once a week an email via LinkedIn to all members with a call to action. Do something. Go here. Blah, blah, blah. And I can't do that anymore. And that's just such a loss. So I love the idea of directing them over to your Facebook group to get involved there. And and, and the thing about having inside jokes and the jargon, how great is this? Well, there's just so many things that you can do. And think about tribes that you're in and what makes you feel special and what makes you buy one motorcycle or one car or one <laughs> from one author more than another. It's because of that uh, you feel like an insider. You feel like you know what's going on. And yeah, that's what you, you want to create in your own you, tribe. Absolutely. you got to get the leather vest in the motorcycle club. All right, that's part of the tribe. All right, so, Gina, we have less than three minutes. Any other tidbits you'd like to add very quickly? Well, I think I think the main thing is just practice. And one of the things you might want to do is uh, do what I call the escape room, where you just close yourself off into a room and you put a sign on the door, do not bother me recording right now. And you just record, 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 record until you are just sick of it. But by then you're comfortable and you probably have something that you're comfortable releasing out to the world. So that's one way to do it. I have some other techniques that I share with people to help them get more comfortable. Um, I invite your audience to connect with me. I'm constantly running challenges that are specifically geared to speakers, authors, experts, and they can. You can find my most current challenge at GinaChallenge.com. That's G-I-N-A Challenge.com. Uh, as I said, I have those the the resources GinaCar.com/resources, so people can check out the different products that I recommend there, and. I just love helping people get their message out. My personal mission is to empower and inspire millions around the world. And I've found that I can do that by helping people who are already empowering, inspiring others like you to get the message out in a bigger way through video. So this really fulfills me, gets me excited, and I look forward to helping more of your folks do the same thing. Well, I loved having you. A lot, lots of information. Clearly, we need to bring Miss Gina back um, and talk about so many of the other things that she has deep, deep dive in the bones expertise on because that's what's going to make all of you successful, whether it's in your writing, whether it's in the just publishing, whether it's in your book marketing, it's whether fill in your blank. But um, I think this is part of the magic formula, which I love to share with all of you on Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing. So we will be back with you. Thank you. Thank you, first of all, to Gina Carr. And for all of you, GinaCarr.com forward slash resources is going to be a wonderful tool for you to discover. And Gina, we do want to have you come back. So thank you. Well, I'd be delighted. Thank you so much, Judith. All right, next week, keep writing, keep publishing. We'll see you then. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Each 